Well, we made it home. And I have never been so in love with California. Sometimes we have to leave the familiar to finally see the beauty in the everyday and realize our life is a precious gift. jungle, Gilberto and I went to an amazing city called San Cristobal de las Casas, and unfortunately, I got sick from something I ate at a restaurant. I returned to Goldie Farms a few days later and just got sicker. I finally went to urgent care, but the physician said he couldn't tell what was wrong with me without some lab work. In the meantime, I was having a hard time staying hydrated and nourished. I was losing weight and getting weaker. Gilberto offered to make me a green juice from his garden. Given my last experience with medicinal remedies, I was a little bit hesitant, but now I'm familiar with the incredible healing power of plants, so I agreed to his concoction. To make garden fresh green juice, first soak your aloe to remove the latex inside. Next, fill the blender with fresh greens. Chard is easy to grow here, but spinach works well too. Add tender yarrow, comfrey, and calendula blossoms. There's so many different herbs you can add to this juice. Let me know your favorite medicinal plants in the comments. Fresh mint and cucumber are tasty and refreshing, so throw those in too. Ginger helps calm the stomach and improve digestion. Add two apples, peeled, cored, and sliced. Citrus is high in vitamins and fiber and helps hide the taste of bitter herbs. You can use oranges or grapefruit, whatever you have on hand. Add a splash of apple cider vinegar and add cinnamon because cinnamon is just wonderful. Add roughly two cups of filtered water and a big old scoop of local raw honey. Oh, and don't forget your aloe once it's ready. Remove the spines and skin. Work carefully with a sharp knife to extract the gel. Blend it all up and enjoy. Cheers to your health. Ten days after going to urgent care, the lab called to tell me my tests were inconclusive. But by that point, I had already been out in the garden, feeling great and giving Goldie Farms some TLC. And wow, Goldie Farms, what a welcome she gave. I felt so much love and appreciation for all these beautiful plants that had been creating food while I was away. And I'm so grateful for aloe, which helped heal my insides and soothe my skin. Aloe is one of those plants that anyone can grow, even in an office or an apartment. You can always have medicine nearby. I decided to experiment burying the leaves, similar to how we use the banana trunks in Chiapas, to see how they break down over time and if they help keep the soil damp. I'll check back in a bit to see how well it works. Goldie Farms was in need of some love and magic, and so much pruning. With sharpened shears, it was time to cut back salvias and fruit trees, which sends a signal to the surrounding plants that it's time to grow. I'm getting braver when it comes to pruning. Pruning can be scary. You're 
taking out something you invested time in and it has potential, but it's important to make sacrifices so that your garden has space and energy for something healthier to thrive and nourish you. So don't be afraid to make some big cuts and trust that when spring comes, your bravery and efforts will be rewarded. gets excited when I cut back the cat mint. I like working in this bed too. It smells so nice. Due to the winter heat wave that occurred while we were on our adventure, we came back to beautiful blossoms and I felt sad about pruning them away, but they made for beautiful bouquets. though that there's one thing that's painfully missing from Goldie Farms. Elvis. When I didn't see him when I got home, I had Gilberto come over and we spent all day looking for him, taking apart the shed where he lives, checking all his hiding spots, to no avail. I suspected the worst. A friend had been checking in on Goldie Farms while I was away and she had sent updates and pictures while I was in Chiapas. All was well just a few days before so we couldn't figure out what had happened. Then I went on nextdoor.com, and sure enough, a neighbor had spotted him and posted weeks ago. She said she tried to catch him, but he got away. Apparently, he had been sneaking out at night and going on adventures of his own, then coming back to Goldie Farms in the day. But at some point, he stopped coming home. I posted ads and flyers, and I'm still setting out food and water in hopes that he'll come home. My grandpa figured Elvis went looking for a lady bunny. I spoke to the woman who owns the grocery store by my house, and she told me there's a colony of escaped domestic bunnies living on the south side of town. Perhaps he caught wind of them and decided to risk everything for love. Freedom is pursuing our own good in our own way and is the most important element of well-being and happiness. Elvis was fortunate enough to experience the gift of freedom. He chose to no longer live in a hutch. Once he had experienced the garden, it was too depressing for him to be in a cage. He moved into the shed where he enjoyed its shade and safety and his own private entrance. For whatever reason, he decided to leave, following his instincts to seek adventure, freedom, and love. I still hold hope he'll come back to Goldie Farms. I learned when I was 11 not to give up hope on missing pets. This was my pet iguana named Juana. My science teacher had given her to me and I always felt bad that she was in a cage, so I'd bring her outside to explore on warm days in Indiana. One day she escaped into the woods behind my house. My family, friends, and I searched for her, but she was gone. Winter set in, and we assumed that she had died. The next spring, our neighbor called us all excited. She told us that a family down the street lived with their elderly mother. The elderly woman began insisting that a giant reptile was living on their pool cover. The woman's daughter mentioned to our neighbor that she was worried her mother was starting to lose her mind because she insisted an oversized lizard was sunning itself on the pool cover. Oh, that must be Aaron's missing iguana, our neighbor replied. Somehow, Juana had survived a whole winter in our Midwestern suburb. We brought her home and put her back in her cage in the laundry room, but she had a taste of the wild and refused to be trapped. She would bang her head against the cage all day trying to get out. She quickly developed a sore on her nose. It was so upsetting for our whole family. So we put an ad at the local vet and a biologist called us. She said she had a huge greenhouse where Juana could live. It's no jungle, but it suited her situation perfectly. So I hold on to hope that I'll be reunited with Elvis 
and give him an even better life, just like I did with Juana. I've always been an animal lover, and I've always longed for them to be free. Perhaps a seed is planted in our hearts when we are young, our calling, our destiny for our short time here on Earth. And I'm finally realizing, perhaps mine is to create a paradise where humans and animals can live in harmony with one another and enjoy the freedom that is our birthright.